people know, but we do have time for some questions. I do hope after this presentation, we, ha we would have answered your question, uh, Dr. Markier, about should uh, tobacco harm reduction be medicalized? And I believe, I do hope that everyone would agree that it should be a resounding no. Every one of you have demonstrated that. Vaping is a consumer's driven product. It's a consumer driven one. One of the pillars of harm reduction is the empowerment one gets from distancing himself from his addiction. And for smokers, it starts with vaping. Let them. Thank you. I'm Bengt Fieberg, the snooze guy. I have a <laughs> I, I was really surprised to see the numbers from New Zealand because I seriously believed Sweden was the only country in the world where women smoke more than men. We have a long snooze male tradition in Sweden. So I wondered if I could comment on that from New Zealand. And this is not a question, but it would also be interesting in the uh, homeless experiments and the mentally disabled, if you have considered uh, also testing smokeless tobacco products. Thank you. Sorry, just to clarify what you're, you're asking, you want to know why Māori have a high smoking prevalence? Is that Māori Wh women? Why... Uh, all over the world, male, males have oh. a higher smoking yes. prevalence. And Why Sweden woman? and New Zealand, Maori, obviously have not. <laughs> yes, well, you know, I think this comes back to uh, Māori women in New Zealand. We, we come with our own mana or, you know, we, we no one's going to tell us what to do. And so, because of that, you know, we determine what and what we do. They have taken up smoking in our country, and you know, it was it was given to chiefs. Like our Māori women are chiefs in their own right, and you know, if it was good enough to for the chiefs of our tribes, it was definitely good enough for them. And so, the, you know, this whole mentality of uh, Māori women continuing to smoke is, is just been a generational thing. This was also when, when you know, our, our country was colonised and tobacco was used as trading um, with our, our people. So, you know, at the end of the day, and I think this is why it was, it's very hard with our Māori women to, to try and help them and crack this addiction was because they, they truly believed that they, they had a right and no one was going to tell them what to do. We look forward to the Maori women taking the lead in smoking cessation next time. So can I just respond to your question about snus in um, homeless uh, centres? So I see potential there. So our feasibility study um, and our pilot, our pre-feasibility pilot work, we did show that e-cigarettes, you know, they're not a magic bullet. We are working with people with not great um, eyesight. Um, I've said this before at another conference, but e-cigarette manufacturers, your instruction booklets are far too small for someone with 20-20 vision. Refilling liquids when you're withdrawing or you haven't had your meds. This isn't just something, you know, if you're homeless, there's, you know, there's a whole range of people on different types of medication. They're not perfect yet. So I do see the value in things like SNUS. I think we need a range of products. When we were planning this study, we did think about SNUS. But what we don't want to do in the UK is provide people with something that they can't then get. So this is where we need a regulatory environment that really offers choice. So I see potential there, but what we don't want to do is set people up with something that has been great for them and then actually 
I've run out and now I can't purchase it. Someone back there apparently in the middle. And Hi, um, Deborah, was it you that you were um, giving a choice of options for um, substance use people? Yeah. Um, I was curious as to um, why that they tended to choose the POCX rather than the DOT, which is a sort of a pod product which is seems more intuitively easy to use, but they actually, more of them went for the POCX. Did you have any idea why? Some of the data we're collecting ab uh, about why people are motivated to choose certain devices and early findings, um, so from feedback from clients. So it tends to be people that are using alcohol that are choosing the DOT because it seems a bit easier um, to use, whereas people, um, I guess if you're, if you're used to smoking heroin, you're used to smoking crack, then you use, you, you, you're used to you're used to inhaling um, your drug of choice, I guess. Um, but it's just kind of how it's playing out at, yeah, uh, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I think it's just it's just e ease of use as well. So a lot of you know, that so those people that are choosing the dot, they they're just not wanting the complication of um, reef. Yeah. So in our in our mental health services, so we're, we 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 also doing study, studies in mental health services, and it's the opposite. People are choosing the pod devices rather than the ref, the the refillable devices. That's a big thing to substance use community, uh, almost. Just it, just okay. in in our local yeah. services, okay. I ca yeah, I can't yeah. generalise sure. to, to sure. everyone else. Okay, thank you. Um. Can I just also can I just pick up on a point that the first gentleman talked about, about um, kind of licensing um, e-cigarettes. I, I really don't think it has to be an either or thing. It can be both things at the same time. These people need choices and, and so, some of the people that we work with would be excluded um, from vaping if we don't have an either or, if we don't have both choices available. Gentlemen here in the front, someone just a reaction to <laughs> reinforce <laughs> the message. Uh, when a doctor says uh, you should take carrots because it's good for your health, I it's important that uh, doctors can do that. They can say, use that or that it, ca it can be provided to people, of course. But not for in the pharmaceutical industry, to be extremely clear. Oh, gentlemen in the front. Uh, Andrew Thompson, THR advocate from Australia. I'm just picking up on a point that uh, Kevin brought up briefly about unassisted quitting. And I have a, a, a two-part question for anybody on the panel that feels I can weigh in. Uh, we have a certain tobacco <coughs> controller from Australia who is constantly pointing out that most people who end up quitting smoking, do it using unassisted um, cessation. Um, and I won't name them because I suspect that if you say their name three times, a demon might appear. Um, now, I think he, he is very resistant to the concept of e-cigarettes. And I suspect that part of the reason is because he feels that it's stealing the numbers from the unassisted quitting cold turkey people. So my uh, questions for you would be, A, do you consider that using e-cigarettes to cease smoking is unassisted quitting? And B, if you have a perception on where it's taking percentage numbers from, from other methods, medicalised, unassisted, where, where is it, are the numbers coming from? Well, I mean, I, I think we know from people with serious mental illness that unassisted quitting rates are extremely low. I'm not sure why keeping a scorecard is more important than saving lives, though. <laughs> I mean, that's just 
it may sound a little snarky, but <laughs> um, I think we have to do whatever it takes. And um, would I consider using an e-cigarette unassisted? No. Do I think there's any shame? And I mean, we're all part of a community, right? Uh, why should we feel ashamed about doing something in an assisted way? <laughs> Yeah, my I have two questions. So the first one is, I'm, I'm not sure who on the panel said it, but this notion that if people with serious mental health problems, people who use drugs, if they totally quit nicotine, that they don't, their symptoms don't come back, that they're okay. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. People who have schizophrenia and the nicotine is helping with sensory gating, for example, if you take nicotine out of the equation, they will have symptoms, um, and people who are using uh, nicotine for depression or anxiety, if you take it totally out of the equation, I believe they will, or they're at higher risk of then experience depression or anxiety, and so I hear this a lot, and I just don't believe it. Nicotine makes their lives better, and so that's why vaping is so important. So I want you to come back on that. And the other thing is pretty much everyone um, talked about the cost. How do we bring the cost down? That is so critical. So the FDA has just approved ICOS in the United States. Um, cost will be an issue, and then the question related to that is, are, are there gonna be studies done with ICOS, which is a heat not burn product? Because I think that might be really helpful for some of the vulnerable populations that we work with. Yeah, I, I'll take, the, well, I mean, the first part is, I mean, at least in, in clinical trials, um, people don't relapse, their psychiatric symptoms just don't relapse. So maybe anecdotally there are people who um, have resurgence of psychiatric symptoms after quitting smoking, but the studies just don't bear that out. So, um, I mean, they're, they're usually relatively short term. They're probably three to six month um, studies, but they just don't, it just doesn't bear that, that doesn't, that's not borne out in the clinical trials, um, cessation trials. The iQuos, uh, I'm not a big fan of the, of the heat not burn. Um, I think that it's still exposing people to dangerous levels of toxins in a way that e-cigarettes are not, so. Um, I'll just answer a bit more about iQuos as well. So in the UK, there's no price advantage at all if you switch to iQuos. So when we're talking about reducing the, the burden of cost that smoking causes people, which actually, I can't remember who showed it, but I think it was you, Sarah, that there's a real motivator if you can reduce cost. You know, people in public health don't really like to talk about cost as a motivator. They like to talk about health, but, it's, but people are motivated to save money. So at the moment, while there's no price advantage, I would see that there would be you know, we're going against what we know motivates people. Unfortunately, uh, the police uh, by the name of Jerry Stimson has just showed up. <laughs> so unfortunately, we do have to end this session. I want to thank you for your participation and your patience. And if you have any questions, come on up and we'll talk some more. Thank you.